Okay, so in today's tutorial, I will show you how to take a project that was made for U8G library and use the U8G2 library instead. And in case you don't know, the U8G and U8G2 libraries are libraries for Arduino and monochrome displays, like for example, this OLED display or those LCD displays. And while both libraries are very similar, using the U8G2 library is not as simple as changing the include line from U8Glib to U8G2Lib. Before we start, let me talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is PCBWay. If you use the link down in the description, you can get 10 PCBs for free, only paying for shipping, but you can also get the CNC machining, 3D printing, and other types of manufacturing. So thank you, PCBWay. And let's get back to the video. I will be using the OLED menu project. The link to the full tutorial is in the description. And it looks something like this. And also same as the last time, I will be using Wokwi, which is a free online Arduino emulator. And here it is, the previous project running, so I can press the buttons and change the menu items, and then click the select button to jump into the screenshot, the QR code for the tutorial, and back to the menu itself. And as you can see here, I'm using the U8G library, so the older one. Now I've already told you that switching to the U8G2 library isn't as simple as saying include U8G2 library, but let's try that anyway. So I'll restart the simulation and we will see some kind of error saying no such file or directory, which means that we don't have the U8G2 library included. So we have to close the dialog, jump to library manager and click this plus button and type in U8G2 library, select this one and it will be included in our project. So now it should be running, but it will of course say a lot of different errors and that's because we have to have a different constructor for this display not having the U8G but U8G2 and that's pretty much what you see in here so the U8G should be U8G2 but before we do this change let's start with the different constructor we are using the OLED display with the SSD 1306 chip in the 128 by 64 pixel resolution connected using the I2C connection with knowing that, let's jump to the U8G2 documentation and search for SSD 1306 in the 128x64 pixel resolution. And you can see that we have quite a lot of those. So I'll click the first one. And you can see that those are all SPI connections. So we will scroll down until we find the section which uses the I2C connection, which is this one. Now all of those displays are SSD 1306 in the 128x64 pixel resolution using the I2C connection. One difference is the software versus the hardware I2C connection. The other difference are different drawing modes indicated by this one to and F. We will talk about the details in a minute, but for now we will go with this one, which is the same as the page drawing mode in the U8G1 library. So we will use this constructor because again we are using the hardware I2C connection. So I'll copy this into our code, comment out the old constructor and paste our new constructor. And we have to actually change it to say this together with the U8G2 and we have to set the rotation. So if I open the documentation, there are a few different options to choose from, but since I don't need any rotation at this point, I will select this U8G2 R0. So I'll just paste it in there and the reset and the clock and data are optional so i'll just get rid of those and not use those at all at the semicolon and of course coming out those additional informations now i've already told you that every occurrence of u8g should be replaced with the u8g2 so all those drawing functions should be u8g2 instead of u8g so i will select find and replace and replace with those u8g2 together with the dot replace all and that should fix it let's just close this and try to restart the simulation and unfortunately Unfortunately, there are still some problems and it looks like that the U8G2 library doesn't have draw bitmap P function. Now this is quite important because it's drawing all our images, but I'm still gonna say let's not worry about it for now. I will close it and basically just comment out all the occurrences of the draw bitmap P function because I really want to see something on the display even if it's just, you know, a plain text. So once I comment out everything and restart the simulation, there are no errors anymore, but we don't see anything on the display. And that's because we are missing one last step and that's described on this page on the U8G versus U8G2 library and that's begin must be called this was optional in the U8G library. So we'll jump back to the code and make sure that in the setup function, there is this U8G2 begin function being called. So U8G2 dot begin. One last restart of the simulation. And now we can finally see something being drawn. So we can see that those menu items are being drawn. We can press the buttons. It will scroll through the menu. But obviously no pictures are being drawn because we've commented out all the occurrences of the draw bitmap P function. If I open the documentation, there is this draw bitmap function, but no draw bitmap P. And the P stands for program memory, so it stands for images which are being stored in the program memory, which is our case. Anyway, if I look at the draw bitmap function closely, there is this note saying this function should not be used anymore. Please use draw XBM function instead. So let's try that. 
and again since our images are stored in the program memory we will call the xbmp version of this procedure so i'll copy this example and paste it in our code and let's for example use it in this place which is for drawing the screenshot so i'll paste in here so draw xbmp the width should no longer be divided by 8 so it will be 128 and the height of our screenshot is 64 pixels and we will use the very same bitmap screenshot array for drawing the bitmap Let's restart the simulation and see what we got. So in the menu I will select for example this dashboard item and click the select button and we see something but it looks kind of wrong, right? Uh, let's do a little bit of examination and for that I will copy this in the clipboard so I'll right click and select copy image and paste this into photo P. And you can see that those 8 pixels wide are kind of flipped and then the next 8 pixels are flipped as well and so on and so on. So I can try to fix it by selecting those 8 pixels and then going to edit transform flip horizontally and the next 8 pixels and so on and so on. So our stored images has the flipped bit order and we need to somehow fix it. And as usual there are multiple ways how to do that. One way is to use the free utility called LCD image converter, open our PNG image and then select image export and export this as the XBM file format. I will save it and then open it in notepad which looks like this and then copy those individual bytes into our code so i'll select this part and replace the old image in our code which is this one the bitmap screenshot gauges so i'll remove the old bytes and paste the new bytes you can see it looks kind of different because there are no spaces but it doesn't matter that much once i restart the simulation and go to the same page i can see that the image is not flipped anymore but it's inverted so that's something we have to fix as well inside the lcd image converter i have to select image inverse and then again export this as the xbm file format you already know the next steps which is opening this in notepad copying it into our code and restarting the simulation and going to the same page and finally we can see the screenshot how it should look like now we have quite so many images and doing this for all of those will take some time so i was looking into a way how to do this conversion faster and one of the tools that could be used is called image magic which is a free open source software for doing all kinds of stuff for images mainly through the command line though so the cli stands for command line interface and here are two examples, one being very simple and the other one being quite complex. So let's download the tools and start the command line. And it's done by selecting start and run and typing cmd for command line. We want to make sure that we are on the same directory as our images, so we can use the cd command to jump to the directory either outside or inside. Now here comes the important part. We want to invert the images and save them in a different format. And for that we will use a called tool Mogrify mogrify and the inverting is done by calling the negate function negate function and saving as a different format is done by setting the format and in our case it will be xbm format we want to do this for all the png files in our directory so i'll type in like this and as soon as i hit the enter key all the files in the directory should be converted to the xbm versions so if i sort by name for every png file there is this xbm file now it would be nice to have the content of all those xbm files to be merged into one and for that we can use a standard dos function called copy and we will copy all the xbm files into a new file called merged xbm files again as soon as i hit the enter key all those files will be merged into one which is this one merged xbm files and it includes the content of all those xbm files so we can use this for our code we still have to do one more thing in our code we have a constant unsigned character the name of the array and it's being stored in the program memory in the text file we only have a static character and no program memory so we want to replace a static character so ctrl h replace a static character with constant unsigned character so replace all and then replace this piece for example and include the program memory like so again replace all and now the code is ready to be copied into our main sketch once this change is done we want to replace all the draw bitmap p functions with the draw xbmp so replace all we want to uncomment those lines of course because we want to draw those elements and we should not divide the width by eight so i'll delete this divided by eight from width for all the draw xbmp functions it looks much better but there is still one problem and that is that we don't see the right part of the selected item and what's happening is that the scroll bar is actually being drawn over the selected item background and by default in the uag2 library the images are drawn non-transparent like this so in order to draw transparent images like this we have to set the set bitmap mode to one so i will copy this example and paste this into the setup function like so and restart the simulation and you can see that now also the outline of the selected item is visible all the way to the right side the screenshots also look fine so i think it's time to move to the real arduino and test it on the real display for that let's start the arduino ide and select sketch include library and manage libraries and in the dialog type in u8g2 press the enter key then find the u8g2 library and select install 
delete the content of the sketch and copy the code from the walkway website into our sketch. Select the correct board, in my case that's the Arduino Uno, and select port, which will be different in your case. Sometimes you see the board name, sometimes you don't, but in most cases that's the highest port number. And then press the upload button. The sketch is quite big, so the compilation takes some time. You can see we are using quite a lot of flash memory because of the images being used, but it can still fit to Arduino Uno memory, which is great. And now it is running on the OLED display, but using the UADG2 library. We haven't talked about the actual connection between the Arduino and the display, but it should be very straightforward. So the VCC goes to 5 volts, the ground goes to ground, the SCL, which is a serial clock, goes to SCL pin on the Arduino, and the SDA, which is a serial data, goes to SDA pin on the Arduino board. Now let's try to run the same sketch on the other LCD displays, but for that we first need to understand the different drawing modes of the U8G2 library. And that's because the drawing mode used for the OLED is not supported for those LCD displays. So let's talk about the current drawing mode, which is a page drawing mode, which is indicated by the number 1 in the initialization, also it's saying page buffer in here. And in this mode, the display is divided into 8 parts, into 8 pages, and I've used a different color to visualize those individual parts, and every part is sized 128 by 8 pixels. So in the beginning of the drawing function, we call the UADG2 first page, which means create me a buffer sized 128 by 8 pixels, like so, so this is the size of the buffer, and then inside the drawing loop, draw everything in into this buffer, so we'll draw the content of the first page, which looks like this, and then send this buffer to the display itself. Then there is this UADG next page, which pretty much means jump to the next page. So again, the buffer is still 128 by 8 pixels, but now we draw a different part of the screen, so we'll draw this part of the screen, and then send it to the display, and then we do the very same thing for page number 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and finally 8. The biggest advantage of this method is the RAM usage, because we only need 128 by 8 pixels for the RAM, which is 1024 bits, or in other words, 128 bytes. And that's nice, because the Arduino Uno has 2048 bytes, so we are not taking too much memory. And we can possibly use it also for the smaller microcontrollers, like the ATtiny 80 85 which has only 512 bytes of RAM, but our 128 should still fit in there. The other mode supported by the UADG2 library is the full screen buffer mode, and this one is indicated by the F character in the initialization. So in our case we were using this with the one digit in there, and we would use this one instead which has the F character. Now in this mode this display is not divided into pages, but this full screen buffer is allocated in RAM. So in case of this display, we need 128 by 64 displays divided by 8, and we end up with 1024 bytes required for the RAM. Again, in Arduino Uno, we have 2000 bytes, so we are already taking half of the available RAM memory just for this one buffer. The advantage is that everything should run faster, and in our particular case, those LCDs that we have only support this drawing mode. But before we move to those LCDs, let's try to switch to the full screen buffer mode for the OLED display. Let's start with the initialization. Again, we will be using this line, which has the F character for full screen buffer. I will just copy this into our sketch and then just change it accordingly. So add the semicolon, comment out this part of the text, add the correct rotation, get rid of the reset and the clock data because those are optional parameters, and set it to U8G2, like so. I will comment out this one, which is for page buffer, then go to the documentation, and you can see that we need to use the clear buffer for clear buffer and then send buffer to send the buffer to the display, so it's quite straightforward. So I'll just copy this line, and in our code, instead of going to the first page, so I'll comment this out, I'll actually clear the buffer, copy this line, and instead of jumping to the next page, I will send the buffer to the display. And hopefully it should be that simple, so restart the simulation, and we should see the very same result, except now we are using the full screen buffer. When we run this on the real Arduino, you will notice that we are using 96% of the flash memory and 86% of the RAM memory, so we are stretching the memory quite a lot. Again, out of those 2048 bytes, we are using half of those for full screen frame buffer. So let's finally try those LCD displays, and three most important parts is the resolution, which is 120 by 64 pixels, the connection, which is the i 2 connection, and the used chip, which in this case is ST7567S. Now I've used the initialization based on this discussion, and this was proposed by the creator of the UHG2 library. I've actually used this one, so I'll just copy this one into our code, paste it in here, and change it accordingly. Again, setting the right rotation and setting it to UHG2. But this time we need to provide the clock and data because this is the software i 2 c connection, not the hardware one. So for the clock we will use the SCL, and for the data we will use the SDA. We don't need to provide the reset pin, and we have to comment out the previous initialization. Now if you run it like this, nothing will be actually displayed on the displays, and that's because for some reason that I don't fully understand, 
you have to manually set the I2C address, so I'll just copy this line from this discussion and paste it in our code. I will paste it in the setup function and it has to be placed before the UHG2 begin function. Upload it again and hopefully we'll see something on those displays. There is something but it's very hard to read, but thankfully that could be easily fixed. In our code in setup function we need to set the set contrast function, so I'll say UHG2 dot set contrast and set it to 255. The documentation says that the value could go from 0 to 255, but for this particular display I've noticed that any value below 150 actually makes things invisible. I have also made one last change and it is changing the rotation from R0 to R2, which means rotate the display by 180 degrees. And so here is the final sketch running on those three LCDs. Compared to the OLED screen, the update is quite slow, but they are a little bit cheaper and I kind of like the appearance of those, especially the one with dark pixels on a white background. It just reminds me of some older devices. And that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions, please put those down in the comment section and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.